Hello, everyone, and welcome to AI with Sohini, where we talk about anything and everything AI. So I am super excited to be taping this last part of the Generative AI short course on New Year's Eve of 2024. So I know 2023 has been a huge year where a lot has changed in the domain of AI with just generative AI coming into being and a lot of products and solutions being launched. And in 2024, I'm hoping I'll be able to cover them some more, have more lifetime with you so that I can literally answer some of the burning questions that you may have. So in this last part of the video, I am going to be showing you some hands-on exercises that you can perform using Microsoft Edge. So if you have Microsoft Edge tool uh, on your computer, you can launch Bing Chat. And in Bing Chat, you can use all of the examples that I'm going to be showing as prompt engineering tools. So you can do automation, you can literally do automated summarization, or you can do automated report generation using the tools that are shown here. And you can, if you are building your own campaigns if you are building powerpoints or, or campaigns you're doing marketing content design you can literally be using dali 3 which is also inbuilt as a part of Bing chat in order to create your content so in order to create images high-res images um, along with you know creative tools uh, that, that are uh, at, at your disposal so i hope this video is of of use to you and you know stay tuned for the next video because i'm going to be covering all the fascinating products that have been launched in the year of 2023 using generative ai so not just large language models but large multimodal models as well if this is of interest to you please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so let's get started So I wanted to start this session by pointing you towards some of very useful tools so that you can start your prompt engineering exercise if you want to build automated systems. So the first uh, resource I wanted to point, point out is this GitHub by dare.ai and it is on prompt engineering guide. So if you go under the folder called lecture, you are going to find this PDF, uh, which is the, the course, and it's the self-consistency example, and it shows all the different examples that has been slated here that uses prompt engineering. So it has a lot of examples on how to do summarizations, how to do code generation, how to do data pre-processing. All of these are very useful along with this video that shows how to use few short, you know, uh, zero shot examples in order to properly formulate and structure your uh, responses. So everything that we've talked about in the previous video, uh, I'm going to be linking in this description box, you will be able to see all of that in this particular, uh, you know, in this particular lecture. And what I particularly find very useful is if you go into the notebooks, it shows all of the examples of what you need to do in order to build, uh, you know, your lang chain system, where you can break the whole data in to multiple chunks where you can use your open AI key and you can literally start asking questions and make sure that you are you know passing the right messages and the right format in order to get your uh, you know responses back Along with this, I also wanted to share with you this page on advanced prompt engineering techniques. So this is where you will see that it is very important to give very clear stepwise instructions, pass that to the large language model, and also tell the large language model on how to format the response. So if you want your responses in JSON format or PDF format or in a bullet format, it's very important to write that. And advanced prompt engineering actually helps eliminate hallucinations to a huge context and it is also very key in order to ensure limiting conditions so if no data chunks are uh, are returned by the LangChain system, then what should you do, which is part of LangChain. And this heavily is, is useful for reducing hallucinations. So both of these will be excellent guides for anybody who wants to literally start building their own solutions by prompt engineering. Now, if you are a learner or just a beginner in the area of prompt engineering, then let's start by looking into what are some of the very basic prompts that you can start building using your Bing chat. Now, Bing AI, Bing Chat has actually launched this feature called Chat. So all you need to do is use your Edge 
in, in your in your computer and just click on this thing called chat. And if you see that there are three different modalities in which you can ask a question, it's called creative, which is which takes creative liberties, balanced, which is the one that I'm going to be using, and precise is when you want extremely factual answers. So these are the three different modes in which you can, you know, prepare a chatbot. And even if you have your own data, you can have a meaningful chat-like experience. So I am going to be attaching a few prompts that I have hand created. And this is going to be attached in the description box below, in the link below. So I highly encourage you to, to, to try these out and experience yourself how it would be in order to have a meaningful conversation with a chatbot. Now, the first question uh, I wanted to show you is how you build a persona and if you are trying to do an automation task. So let's see, in this case, this is going to be the prompt. I'm just going to copy and paste it in my in my query using the text. So I already have a text, which is my archive uh, you know, PDF file. And what I'm trying to do in this case is what are the top three contributions of this paper and how many authors does this paper have? So let's say that you want to and you have a lot of research papers that you want to very quickly summarize. So this would be a very helpful, very short prompt in order to do that. And finally, you give what is the format in which you want the responses. Now, one thing you do notice is there is a 2000 word limit uh, in, in, in every single prompt. But again, if you have the paid versions, it, it can easily go up to 4000. So let's submit and let's see how the response works. So now we see this is the mechanism behind which uh, this uh, you know, large language model based uh, you know, solution or product is based off of. First of all, it clarifies what was the question. So the two questions that you're asking, top three contributions from this paper, number of authors from this paper. And, and then it is it is being the you know thankful virtual assistant. And then it is answering the two questions. Uh, it is first telling you this is the you know top three the, you know contributions. It's summarizing the paper. And this is saying that this paper has only you know one author. So so now you see that this very simple prompt was able to very quickly generate summaries. And it was also able to do multiple question and answering. So what I wanted to, to stress here is a prompt need not always answer only one question. It can be a compound question where you provide all of the data. So if the data is already accessible to it in the format of a you know archive paper, it can very easily do pr problems like this, which is question answering. So multiple question and answering using a single prompt. Now let's go to the second prompt. In this case, what we are doing is we are providing it multiple documents. So there are three different archive papers and there are three different questions you want answered. You want the top two contributions from each. You want to summarize each and every one of them up to five sentences. So very short summaries and also generate an image corresponding to the ideas which is there in the question. So let's see what the system does. First of all, it will always understand the data. So it will it will search for and check if the data you are providing it is available or not. And then it will start. So for every single document, it is providing you know, answers to every single question, as you can see. Somehow, if you find at any stage, if the responses are off, the, the quality is bad, you always have the capability of stopping the responses. Uh, the other aspect that I really like, you know, it's pretty interesting is you can you can download, you can export it, uh, you can copy this in, into and paste it into somewhere else, and you can also share this. So all of this is very important. And again, whenever working with large language models, make sure you always give it feedback so that the system can automatically learn how to improve. As a next step, I wanted to show you the importance of mathematical analysis and mathematical evaluations and the importance of the precise versus the balanced uh, you know, mode. That means the, the parameters that are passed to the large language model. So here I have a prompt in which I am giving a lot of scores uh, and I'm, I'm going to finally ask the average of an English score and average of a math score. So let's let me first show you what the impact is if I just use the normal balanced mode and then I will show you what happens if I use the precise mode uh, otherwise. So again, first of all, it is uh, checking all of the questions and then it is, you know, trying to give you the answers. Now, ideally, my questions are what is the average English score? So if you find the average across all of the English scores, it actually comes out to be 84.8.
However, in this case, just because the large language model is not trained and up for it, it is saying that the average is 84. And then finally, uh, it's it's asking that, you know, whoever, uh, what is the average math score? The average math score is also in, in, incorrect. It is giving it to be 85. And finally, um, it's, it's asking which student actually took only one test. If you take a look at the, at the data here, only student F took the math test and all the other the students actually took English and math test. But in this case, it's saying students E and F only took one test, which is wrong because again, you clearly see that E has taken the English as well as the math test. So it's very clear. And also when, when we are asking to, you know, create a, a line graph, it is giving a lot of, you know, garbage values in, in this case. So ideally, whenever you are doing math analysis, the balanced is not the optimal way in order to ask questions. Now, let's switch over to precise and ask the exact same question. And let's see what happens. So you first of all, you've set the persona, you've given it the data, and then you're asking what is the average English score? What is the average math score? And, you know, which student took only one test? And again, asking it to plot a line graph. Here in this case, you see that it is a way more sophisticated mechanism. It's showing you the work, and this is actually the right answer. Um, the average English score is 84.8, and the average math score is actually 85. So now it is able to do all the you know, factual analysis correctly. And if you ask which student only took took one test. So in this case, again, it's it's saying it's talking about E, but sometimes it it, it is also, you know, missing um, the, the, the fact that E took a, and the English test as well. So it's not always large language models are not always very accurate when it comes to math. But in the ballpark, you can mo modify the parameters in order to get a much more precise, um, you know, uh, response. And whenever you are asking it to, you know, make a, a, a plot, it is saying that it is unable, you know, currently to give you the plot graphs. However, it'll, you know, it's it's giving you ways uh, in order to modify this, and you can go to the spreadsheet like Excel and Google Sheets and just, you know, create the equivalent for it. So, so in this case, our findings are that precise mode is a better mode to use whenever you are using mathematical analytics like your finance data, but whenever you are using, you know, general question answering, creative and balanced can be a, a good resolution. Finally, let's use the last outcome. So this is when you have to generate automated reports. So let's say that there is a style of writing that you want to copy and there are some facts or data that you want to constantly update or upgrade. And you want, in this case, for this report to automatically get generated. In this case, it's an automation engine you are taking and you are automatically generating a weather report. So here I will go for the more creative version in Bing AI and type the same uh, prompt and let's see what comes. Ideally, if you if we take a look at the question, so this is a writing sample from the past about Los Angeles in California, but now you want it to modify this and generate a report for San Jose, California. And now you see it's able to do it perfectly it is able to tell that it is for san jose this is the population the exact metrics that you asked to to be changed it has changed that and the voice and the verbiage is very creative in order to avoid uh, any sort of uh, ways in which you can spot that it has been an automated uh, you know automated summary that has been generated so we have now discussed all the three ways in which you can interact with large language models you can either be precise, which is factually or numerically accurate. Generally, if you're trying to ask questions, it is the balanced format. And you can use a creative format if you are trying to do automated report generation, but with a particular style of writing. I hope you find these useful and I highly motivate and encourage you to utilize these in order to try out, keep experimenting uh, with the large language models. Finally, I wanted to show you the creative mode in which you can generate images based off of any work or campaign that you might be designing. So as you can see in this case, I've gone to the Bing chat and here I have switched to the most creative mode. And here I'm saying make a picture of deep learning models by data scientists. So this is something that I was generating for a post. So I don't really have to go and, and search for a picture anymore. I'll just ask DALI3 to do it. And in this case, this is learning deep learning models by data scientists. And as you can see, there are multiple options, whichever one that you like. 
technique you can actually use for your campaign. One thing I will say that in these cases, um, typically the faces are not accurately generated, but if it is anything which is abstract, then it does a pretty good job. One thing I wanted to mention that all of the features in Bing Chat, they currently do not support audio. Uh, although you can ask a question using your microphone, um, but you cannot really generate audio out of the chat. So in, in this case, I asked the, the chatbot to generate some music for inspiration and motivation. And in this case, it ended up generating a song for me. And I could very well have done a regenerate. But in this case, this is not what I wanted. Uh, and sometimes it can have a hard time understanding what you really mean when you're trying to generate audio. But here I give it something very specific. I said, generate some musical music notes uh, that are inspirational in nature and what it ended up doing was generating some sequence of musical notes so that is all it can do it can give you the code or it can give you the musical note but it cannot actually play the music for you so audio generation is not something that is currently a part of the bing chat and the, there is whisper uh, specific models that can that can do that but the bing chat is not currently capable of generating audio it can only do text as well as music. I hope you find this useful and in the next video we are going to be looking at some of the latest products of generative AI that have hit the markets in 2023.